In this video, we're going to take a look at inflation and we're going to look at how prices for certain items have evolved over time. In the end, we're going to see what items have actually increased in price quite a bit and other things you know, that haven't increased or even decreased in, in the same period of time. So this will be interesting. At first, I'm going to install a couple of libraries that we need. Uh, just very standard ones for data science or analytics projects, which is matplotlib for plotting, pandas for data transformation and requests to make API calls. I am then going to import these into my notebook here. Then in order to get all the data, I'm querying the API of the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, of the US. And in order to query that, you'll need an API key. You can get it for free at the website. I have requested one, I've put it into a separate module, so I'm importing it here. So this BLS is just a, a string value, which is my key. And now on the website, you'll also find a lot of information what you can query. You can query unemployment data, wages and prices, which is what we're going to look at today. So just as an info, you can go to this website, find out more. And here's what I want to look at. I want to look at steak, eggs, tomatoes, dried bean, electricity, and gasoline. And in order to query these from the, the website, you have to kind of look up what series ID would that be. So I've just written them in here and I'll use this, this series map then to actually query these particular series IDs. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of um, back and forth mapping. So later I have to look up again for this uh, series ID, what is actually the, the item that I'm interested in. That's why I kind of write everything back into this, this map. Now, the next uh, part is querying the API, and I'm starting that already because that actually takes a little bit of time. And in the meantime, I can explain how this request happens. So I'm using the request library, and you see here what that usually is. You, you call uh, either a get or post on that. And in this case, it's post because we're sending uh, data along in a, in a particular uh, way. And that's also how the API is defined. We give it a URL. That's what I have to find up here. Our data. So what, what do we want to actually query? And then also a header. In our case, the header is just what kind of content type are we expecting back? So this is JSON. And the data now is multiple things, right? So it's this list of series IDs. And this is what I have here in my, my series map. So I want these six items that I want to look at. So I list that all here and I'll get back um, data series for all of them. I have to set my registration key. Again, this is what I imported from a different module. I have it written somewhere else. You can get your own and do the same thing. And um, I also want to kind of narrow down from time to time. So here it's the start year 2019, the before times, right? And now our, our current year 2023, inflation is high. So it'll be very interesting to see all that data. This query has finished. We now have this response object. And so just as a, as a note, when we look at it, it actually just tells us uh, the, the HTTP code, which is 200, meaning it was a successful query. And if I call this JSON method on here, then I actually get all the data. All right, so we'll take a look. It gives a status report, um, the response time. This is how long it took. Then you'll see results and it has the series field, which is a list of series. In it, you'll get again the series ID that you queried. And then in the data field, you get a list of data records. So each of these dictionary is like one record with like year, month, price, right? And so on and so forth. So with this data, now becomes the, the next step uh, is to, to make that into a neat tabular data so you can plot it and that's what we'll be doing. So I'll get the series list, which is basically from this JSON object, uh, the results key and the series key. So then I get this list and I want to, oops, I want to, um, basically bring it into this shape. I want to have kind of like a, a column of items, the year, month, and the price, right? And so um, this loop will do exactly that, right? So I get go through each series, I look up the series ID, translate it into what we call this item. So this is then the, the name like steak or eggs or gasoline. And I go through this list of data. 
And one thing is just like, I'm gonna filter out certain records. Sometimes the period, this one here, which is usually month 10, right, October, doesn't necessarily start with an M. And that is because then it's some kind of aggregate time. If that is the case, if it doesn't start with an M, I just want to continue. I don't want to write into my data field. But in the usual case, I would just then take the, the remaining numbers here, in this case 10, and that would be my month. The year I can look up from my data as well. I can put that together to a year month here. So this is how I'm formatting it. And then I look up the price and the price is this value. It is a string when it comes back. So I'm making it into a float so we can actually work with the number. And then I append it to these lists that I have to find up here. So that is what's going to happen. This loop is super fast. It's already done. And now I can put this data and make it into a data frame. And here we see the first five records of this data frame. So we'll have this list of items. So right now it's a steak and then further down we have all the other items. But then for this year and month, it's that price, right? Then February of this month, it's that price and so on and so forth. And now I want to make overlay plots with that, right? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find that this year month now is the index of my table. And so I will transform it into a actual date time object. And then I set the index. I set this column as the index and I'll do that in place. So we actually don't see anything happening here, but now this year month is the index and I can plot everything I plot is plotted over that index. Now I want to plot by item and have an overlay plot. So I'm gonna first call this group by item and then that allows me to then grab again the name which is my item and uh, and the group which is a subset of the data that just has data of that item and then I call the plot method directly on that subset data frame. So this will now create these six plots. The next couple of lines are labeling. So x is time, y is price, title is price over time. I rotate the, the, the ticks by 90 degrees just so we can read that a little bit better. And I put the legend. This is the way you put the legend on the outside, on the, on the right hand side, even though it says left. Uh, this has to do with where the anchor is, but you'll, you'll see how that looks. And we're going to plot. Ah, okay. So we have here price over time, starting in 2019, going all the way to 2023. Right now, the latest data is March. And then we see various charts for the various items here, right? And you'll see um, some start high, some start low. Electricity looks like it's barely moving, but keep in mind, electricity by kilowatt hour, that's usually cents, right? It might be going from 30 cents to 50 cents, right? So it looks very small on, on this scale. And you'll see kind of like the, the other items, right? The, um, the steak has always been the, the priciest among these uh, uh, and the, these items, right? At least by, by its unit pound. So now uh, what we're really interested in, well, this gives us some idea on like what has increased, but we want to look at it relatively, right? So we wanna see how prices have increased relative to the beginning and then compare that. And so what we do now is we, we divide each of these price points by its beginning point and then we can actually chart them together. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing the same kind of grouping again, but I'm, I'm finding the starting price, the, the, the price here at the very beginning, and I divide every price by that starting price. That's what I'm doing here. And that's when I can actually plot everything just like before. And you'll see now I have this normalized price. Everything starts at one because you know, I did right by this very first point. So it's at one and you can see how kind of everything evolves. And in the very end, we'll see um, on a relative scale, certain things that have increased a lot more and others that have even decreased. So let's have a look. The highest increase is eggs, right? And only recently that has happened. And if we remember, it actually peaked earlier this year. And the reason for that was the bird flu, right? We had a lot of bird flu cases here in the US. So, um, yeah, poultry meat was, was more expensive probably, but also eggs, right? So all these, all these chicken couldn't lay eggs, so the price is very high. Gasoline we've seen had increased to, to a peak last year, right? Now it's come down again. It's still high compared to 2019, of course. Other things, steak and beans are pretty much on the same level. Steak has, you know, previously been a little bit higher. Green now is electricity, right? Again, this relative scale has increased about the same, 
a relative amount as, as uh, steak and beans. There's uh, certain items, for example, here we have tomatoes, and you see tomatoes have been kind of like on this decrease, you know, up once in a while increasing, but overall they're cheaper now than uh, before the pandemic in, in 2019. So this has come down by quite a lot. Now, this is the end of my video. I hope you found it interesting. You learned something. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll also put this notebook onto GitHub so you can check it out and, and run some analysis by yourself. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And in either case, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.